Good morning all. Uh, part three of the kit build of this frequency meter and crystal tester. Um, and it's time I think now to test this meter. So what I need to do is feed into it um, a variety of different frequencies and uh, see what the readings are on here. And of course I also need to compare this with something else. So the only other thing that I've got that uh, can do frequency measurements is my oscilloscope. So that's what I'm going to use to compare against this meter uh, to try and establish whether or not this thing is accurate, reliable and useful. So here's my oscilloscope. Now one of the things that uh, almost every oscilloscope has is a little uh, oscillator, a square wave generator. This one is 5 volts, 1 kilohertz and I've connected the uh, scope probe to it. And you can see here I'm on the 1 millisecond range and uh, it exactly lines up with the graticule and I've got uh, a little frequency measuring gizmo on here and it's saying 1.0000012 uh, occasionally dips down to 999.999 uh, uh, kilohertz uh, uh, no that would be hertz so this is uh, pretty much exactly 1 kilohertz let's see what the uh, frequency meter kit makes of this pulse. Uh, so I've connected a couple of crop clips to the uh, pulse output and ground. Let's see what the meter is saying. And uh, yeah, well that's pretty good, isn't it? Uh, 1.000. Now the flashing dot indicates that it's reading kilohertz. If that dot is solid, then it's a measurement in megahertz. So, a uh, pretty good start. So far, so good. Exactly one kilohertz. Now, I should say that I'm powering this uh, from 5 volts from a power bank. Um, I've looked up this 7550 voltage regulator and um, it's a low dropout. The dropout is in the data sheet as 100 millivolts. So, now that's just dipped down to 0 0.999. So, uh, yes, that's bang on one kilohertz. Uh, so even if the uh, input is exactly 5 volts, we've got 4.9 volts going to the pick. Uh, often these USB power banks put out slightly higher than uh, 5 volts. So if it's 5.1 or 5.2, then we've got uh, the full 5 volts going to that pick microcontroller. Now this kit says it goes down to 1 hertz. Uh, so what I've done is I've connected up the 555 oscillator that was driving my Z80 uh, project. And I know that's running, well you can see that it's running at about uh, 6 hertz. And it is indeed reading somewhere between 6 and 7 hertz. It's measuring it in kilohertz, 0 0.006 or 0 0.007. Let's see what the oscilloscope makes of that. Uh, well the oscilloscope is being very precise and saying 6.614 hertz. Right, I can get a bit of frequency variation by tweaking the pot on this 555. So let's change that. Uh, we're now reading somewhere between 8 or 9 hertz. Let's compare that with the scope. Uh, yes, 8.74 hertz there. You can see the mark space ratio has changed because that's what happens when you uh, vary the ratio of resistors on a 555, but that looks pretty good. Okay, let's remove the capacitor because then the 555 will oscillate pretty fast. Uh, not that fast. Well, actually, yes, that's kilohertz. So it's 437 kilohertz, the meter is saying. 437, at least let's see what the scope says. And uh, the scope is pretty much in agreement with that. Uh, 436.7. The frequency seems to be dropping a bit. That might be temperature related. It was 436.9 and the meter is now reading 436.5. So they are pretty close. Uh, I am making a note of these but actually they're so close that it's almost no point uh, because so far they're actually uh, in complete agreement but I'll carry on doing that. Right here's a PIC microcontroller running its internal oscillator at about 4 megahertz and that divided by 4 is coming out so we're getting 1.112 megahertz and what's the scope saying? <laughs> Well, unbelievably, 1.112. Would you like to see that? And uh, there it is, 1.112 megahertz. Now, this is rather temperature sensitive. If I put my finger on that picture, 
Oh, didn't like that, did it? I've obviously uh, got a bad connection somewhere. I oh, know, I think it's the scope quantizing. Oh, well, that'll do. Uh, if I warm that chip up, I can get it to go up to 1.113 megahertz. Let's see what the uh, meter is set at. Uh, yes, it says exactly the same. And if I put my finger on that pick chip, the internal oscillator speeds up. So it's not very stable, but uh, 1135, yeah, 35 on the scope. They are in absolute agreement. And uh, finally, using the internal crystal tester, the built-in crystal tester, this little circuit here, I've got my 4.9152 megahertz crystal in there. The meter is reading 4.9150. Uh, let's see what the scope makes of it. The only problem is when I attach the scope to ground, Oh, it was killing that off earlier on. Has changed it a bit. 4.9149. And the scope saying 4.9151. Let's take a look at that. Uh, yeah, so here, 4.9151 megahertz. Just about two counts out. That's not bad. Okay, well, let's do one more. Uh, really high frequency, this one. This is a 16 megahertz crystal. Now, the meter is measuring it at 15.999. But if I get anywhere near it, with the scope that just seems to fall apart so i'll now put the scope on that crystal see what it says and uh no with the scope connected i can't get a reading at all it's coming up with a few hertz there uh, on the meter itself the oscillator just won't run uh, if i disconnect the scope yes i can get it to run but connecting the scope just seems to kill the uh, oscillator circuit on here so i can't do that one so certainly in terms of frequency measurement, uh, this little frequency meter tallies exactly with my oscilloscope. Um, it's not very good at the very low frequencies because it just doesn't have the resolution. And it was one count out. Uh, now that's the fourth digit, so that's only 100 hertz difference um, at 4.9 megahertz. So that's astonishing. Now, of course, um, it should be accurate. It's running from a 20 megahertz crystal. And you probably find that inside my oscilloscope is something very, very similar just a crystal clock circuit and everything is being referenced to that. So you'd expect it to be accurate. No surprise, really. So if I put my finger over the crystal oscillator section of this unit, because the crystal oscillator is awful, then this is an excellent frequency counter and it's going to be absolutely perfect uh, for what I want it for. And that's simply to see the output from the PIC microcontroller during my tutorials. And it's going to be absolutely fine for that. Uh, the variable capacitor is a bit of a weak point. It's not a very uh, qu high quality component. And uh, it's difficult to tweak, particularly if you've only got metal screwdrivers. So I've ordered some ceramic screwdrivers simply to tweak that pot. I've not, I'm have not i not quite sure what state it's in now because I have removed it and put in a fixed capacitance there and then changed my mind and put this back in. And now the pads are starting to peel away from the PCB. So I can't do that any more times. I've... Uh, I've done that as many times as this PCB will tolerate. So why is the frequency counter part of this kit so good, and yet the crystal oscillator, or what they call the crystal tester, so abominable? Well, to work that out, we have to look back at the history of this design. And uh, here it is. Uh, this is a printout from a web page by Wolfgang Buscher. Uh, he calls himself Wolf, so I think I'm going to do that because it's a bit easier. Uh, and this is the uh, the notes for this project. Now, it originally started life as a four-digit uh, frequency counter with the PIC uh, 16F628. He added the fifth digit because it is actually extremely useful to have that extra resolution. That meant a little bit of tweaking around with the uh, driver circuits for the display. But that's been done very effectively. Um, so here's the spec. It's 1 hertz to 50 hertz, exactly what the kit says uh, uh, from the eBay sellers, four or five digits. Well, it's now five digits on the uh, kits that you can buy on eBay. Uh, automatic range switching with different gate times. You don't need that switch. That's for something else. Now, uh, there are others. There's other stuff here, an optional preamplifier. That's not on the kit. And it would be very useful if it were, because one of the problems with this is that you really can only supply it with a five volt uh, square wave oscillation because this input pin goes directly into pin three, which is up there, I think, 
of the PIC microcontroller. You might be able to get away with a bit less than 5 volts, but not that much. Now there's a note here um, about uh, the f there's firmware available for common cathode as well as common anode displays. And Wolf says, not sure which of these are being used by the anonymous clones recently sold on eBay. Well, I'm pretty certain these are common cathode. Now, Wolf is clearly a radio amateur. There's a call sign here, and there's talk about 40 meter QRP transceivers. And this uh, circuit was originally designed as a, a sort of, um, I don't know, an assistance for uh, checking the frequency of radio transmissions, I presume. And this switch offers other facilities to add and subtract uh, frequencies to get an offset frequency. You don't need that just for general measurement. That's why I've left it out. Now, Wolf has provided all the details uh, for his design, including the circuit and uh, critically the firmware. And that's why, of course, this thing got copied. But somewhere along the line, there must have been an intermediary who added in this little crystal oscillator. And it's really awful. But this is not in Wolf's original design. So uh, no blame to Wolf because um, he didn't put this circuit in his original design. And this circuit is not good. Now, clearly, it's very convenient to have a little circuit on the board here, which you can just plug a crystal in. It's capacitively coupled to the input of the frequency counter. And you get an instant readout, 4.9152. Yeah, that's exactly what that crystal is, 4.9152. But this circuit is really unstable. If I disconnect the power and connect it back up, it doesn't oscillate. And that's because I'm feeding 7.5 volts into this input jack, which is rated 5 to 9 volts. And it's only after lots of messing around that I discovered this. Let's set this to uh, down. And then I'm going to take this down, 7.5, 7.0. 6.5, 6.0 volts, 5.5, and look what happens. It suddenly bursts into life. So this uh, crystal oscillator circuit, which is very primitive, is very voltage dependent. It should fire up now reliably if I plug it in on 5.5 volts, but if you plug it in on 7.5 volts, it doesn't start up. Also, this little uh, crystal oscillator I've discovered is quite temperature dependent because I had this sitting here uh, just oscillating away at the crystal frequency. And then after a while, the frequency just started to drift down and I couldn't work out what it was at first, but it's temperature. So let's heat it up with the uh, heat gun. Just get the transistor and the crystal nice and warm. Now that's probably going to take a while to respond, so uh, I'll just stop the camera until it does start responding. Oh, I haven't had to, look at that. It's shooting down already. And it just drops down. And then just stops working altogether. It's temperature dependent. Right, I've just restarted the uh, the whole unit. Um, so it's it's rebooted, it's come back on at the proper crystal frequency. Now these are all, components are all still quite warm, so that will probably start drifting down in a moment. And uh, when it does, I'm going to have a go at it with the freezer spray. Right, there it goes. It's dropping down. Shit, let's rescue it with some freezer spray. Yeah, that's on it. So, I mean, what's that all about? And now it's starting to drop down again. There is another way to rescue this, and that's to start raising this voltage. 6.5, 7 volts. Yeah, that's rescued it again. But I mean, what a horrible little circuit. If the oscillator frequency starts to drop down due to temperature, there it goes again, and or voltage. Now, which shall I rescue it with this time? Freezer spray or some more volts? Let's give it some more volts. Eight volts. Is it still going to drop down? Yeah, it's still dropping down. So I'm afraid it's going to have to be the freezer spray. That's rescued it. It's awful, isn't it? I mean, come on, it's just horrible. So what is it with this little crystal oscillator circuit, which has started to drop down again now? Either more volts or more freezer spray to rescue it, but I shan't bother this time. Well, it's based around a rather primitive circuit. This is called a coal pits oscillator. You've got the crystal here, a couple of 22 puff capacitors. However, um, one of the mods on this kit was that you have to change this upper 22 PF capacitor 
Uh, to double that amount, they suggested soldering an additional 22 PF capacitor on the back of the board. I just put a 47 PF capacitor in here. Um, one of the things is that this oscillator circuit is driven from V in. It's driven from the voltage that you're putting in on this connector. It's not driven from the regulated voltage, the 5 volts, which the PIC is operating from. Um, it does seem to be very temperature dependent, uh, as you can see here. Uh, it's also obviously doesn't work terribly well unless these capacitors are, are very well tuned to the crystal. So I've no doubt that a Colpitz oscillator or a crystal based Colpitz oscillator is fine if you don't change the frequency of the crystal. But this is a crystal test circuit. You're going to be putting anything from a one megahertz crystal in there right up to a 48 megahertz crystal. This is a really inappropriate bit of circuitry. Now, also on Wolf's website, you'll see this circuit diagram, which presumably he drew. And this is being reproduced in some of the eBay listings. And it's also on Banggood's uh, sales page for this particular kit. But of course, it's incomplete because it doesn't include the Colpitz oscillator, this horrible thing. It doesn't include that, um, which is the crystal tester part of the circuit. And the reason it doesn't include that is because Wolf never intended that to be part of the design. Now remember I was saying that one of the problems I can see with uh, this frequency counter is that you really have to give it uh, a 5 volt reasonably square wave input because it's going directly into the PIX uh, timer zero input pin. Well let's take another look at Wolf's website. He's got um, on there a design for a very simple preamplifier which is just a single NPN transistor and this means that you can put in quite small signals and then the output of that transistor goes to the pick. Well, that looks actually not totally dissimilar from the Colpitz oscillator. So I reckon that with a bit of fiddling about and a bit of component modification, you could turn that rather hopeless crystal oscillator into a very useful preamplifier so that you can use this with signals much less than five volts. Now, just a last word from Wolf from his website. Uh, he's well aware that there are anonymous clones of this frequency counter on eBay. And he says he doesn't mind as long as those kids are offered for a fair price, which generally speaking, they are. I thought this was a, a very reasonable price. But please don't help Wolf. Uh, ask Wolf to help you out if your kit doesn't work. It's nothing to do with him that somebody's ripped off his design. So let me sum up what I think of this kit. The frequency counter is excellent as long as you bear in mind the limitation uh, to the, that you're driving the input directly into a PIC input pin and therefore it's not going to work with sort of one volt signals or anything like that. You're going to need close to five volts to make that work. Um, so if you're buying this as a frequency counter, excellent choice. If you're buying it as a crystal tester, lousy choice because this Colpitz oscillator, uh, crystal based Colpitz oscillator, is extremely unreliable. So don't buy this as a crystal tester, do buy it as a frequency counter. Um, if it is possible to rework this uh, oscillator circuit so that it becomes the preamplifier that Wolf designed, then this becomes even more versatile because you'll be able to use it with signals less than uh, 5 volts. So that looks very promising. So to sum up, oh, I have to jack this voltage up again because it keeps drifting down. Uh, this frequency tester is excellent value. It's extremely accurate. The crystal oscillator part of it is utter rubbish. And I'm probably going to have to have another go uh, at it with either some extra voltage or the freezer spray to keep it working. Cheerio.